book, I talk about both economic, monetary, and financial threats, and some of the non-economic ones. And of course, they are correlated to, to each other. And even if you're looking at the economic, monetary, and financial threats, uh, those that they are facing today, you have to worry about, in my view, are quite different from those that were even prevalent, uh, say, two years ago until 2020. You remember, until then, we were worried about uh, lowflation or even deflation. Today, we're worried about inflation. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were worried about uh, what Larry Summers called uh, secular stagnation, weak demand, uh, too much savings. And today, we have to worry instead about uh, negative aggregate supply shocks and inflation and recession, stagflation, very different from secular stagnation, stagflation, just the opposite. Uh, two years ago, we were worried about interest rates being too low. You had $18 trillion of uh, equivalent of public debt in Europe and Japan with negative nominal yields and maturity all the way to 10 years. Today, instead, we have to worry about interest rates being too high and with very large stocks of private and public debt as a share of GDP, the risk of unsustainable debts in the private and public sectors in many parts of the world. Uh, two years ago, we were worried about uh, maybe hyper-globalization, and today instead, we're talking about deglobalization or low globalization or protectionism or fragmentation of the global economy, decoupling, balkanization of supply chains. And finally, uh, we had two years ago, concerns about what people call the everything bubble. There was a boom and bubble and asset inflation. Today we have to worry about the implication of asset deflation. A boom and a bubble now gone bust into a crash. About the non-economic uh, threats, uh, there are several ones that are important to think about. Uh, we live in a world of a geopolitical depression where a number of revisionist powers, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, are challenging the economic, social, political, trading, and geopolitical order the US, Europe, and the West created after World War II. And that is leading not only to deglobalization, but hot, cold wars are getting colder, and the actual hot war in the case of Russia, Ukraine. Something could escalate in non-conventional ways and involving even NATO. Uh, we have the problems of global climate change that is causing severe economic and financial damage. We've had pandemics, and COVID-19, for reason I'm not going to explain right now, is not going to be the last one. AI, robotics, automation, machine learning may increase the economic pie, but it might lead to long-term structural, technological unemployment and increasing inequality. 